Lasers. They're not just good for entertaining your cats. Notice something about the laser. I'm about oh, two meters away, you know, six and a half feet away from here. And the light's not that big in diameter. So it's collimated. It lets out a beam in one direction, where it's like a light bulb, but puts out a beam in, beams of light in all directions. So it's, it's focused. It's all one color. This laser is probably about 6.328 times 10 to the minus 7 meters in wavelength. It's all one, one color exactly. All right? So it's monochromatic, same. And it's coherent, as a matter of fact. It's all in phase. And you know, if something's in phase, if all the waves that are coming out are in phase, they add an amplitude rather than subtract from each other. So how does this work? Well, let's get inside this laser. Laser stands for light amplification because it amplifies the light, makes it bigger, through, I know I spelled through wrong, here's my favorite, stimulated emission, which is a process that Einstein discovered of radiation. So we're amplifying the light. We're getting a more powerful beam through a process called stimulated emission. Of, and it's of radiation, because that's what light is. So here's how it works. This is what Einstein figured out. He just, back in 1916 or 1917, I think, they just didn't have the materials to make one. But he theorized it through this process. I'm going to draw three the same kind of atom. At least that's my intent. Three identical atoms. And these atoms are a little different than most in that, unlike most states, some atoms have things called metastable states. Usually, if you knock an electron up to a higher orbital, it'll last there for maybe a billionth of a second. But there are certain metastable states where if you knock the electron up to that higher level, it'll last as long as maybe a thousandth of a second, which is a relatively long time. That's a million times longer than many of them. So here's what happens. First, you excite the electrons. You can do it optically you know, with photons, or you can run a current through it. You can do it electrically. You can even do it thermally. But what I do is somehow I get that photon up to this higher state excuse me, the electron. I get the electron up to this higher state. And since it's a metastable state, I can get a whole bunch of them up there at the same time because it lasts a while. Okay, so now I've got, it's called a population inversion. Now I've got like an unusually large amount of electrons in this higher metastable state. Now at some point, you know, they, they decay. I mean, it's maybe a thousandth of a second um, is the average, but they're going to decay. So what's going to happen is this electron is going to dump back down. And as it does so, it's going to put out a photon. But as that photon goes by, this electron can feel it. And what happens is it almost like sloshes it out. And as that resonant wave goes by, it knocks this electron down. And since it knocks it in phase, it winds up putting out an identical photon, same wavelength, and in exactly the same phase. The laser is coherent. It's all in the same phase. And as this one goes by, it's going to knock down this electron because it's going to cause it to give up its photon, and it's going to give up the photon since it's doing the same jump as all these guys, same wavelength, and because it happened through stimulated emission, it's going to be in phase. So Einstein said this is a great way, if we can figure out how to do it, if we can find some type of atoms, these atoms that have metastable states, if we could put them together and we could figure out a way to get them through stimulated emission to put out light of the same wavelength, it could be very intense. It wasn't until the 50s they figured out how to do this, find the materials and all. But roughly speaking, 
Here's a gas laser. This is the lasing cavity. Somehow you generally use electricity to get the um, electrons excited. Usually you've got the lasing gas in there and what's called a buffer gas. You want to do something to keep the, uh, the atoms from hitting the wall because they'll hit the wall and they'll lose their energy. So you want to kind of buffer it. It's almost like uh, packing peanuts, the lasing gas, the, uh, excuse me, the buffer. And here you have a 100% reflective mirror. And here, you have a 99% reflective mirror. This is the business end of the laser. So what you do is, you start to stimulate a stimulated emission process. And some of, the, some of the waves, you know, they, they go out here, and they go out here, and they die. Nothing happens to them. But the ones that happen to be going in this direction and in this direction, they're going to bounce back and forth because of the mirrors. And as they bounce back and forth, they provide more opportunities for stimulated emission because this perfect wavelength is going back and forth, stimulating the emission of more wavelengths. The bigger the metastable state, uh, the bigger the population inversion, the more you're going to get. Now, all of it, all the waves are reflecting back from this backside. 99% are reflecting through the business end, and 1% is heading out. And that 1%, I should do it with the, the red. That 1% of the waves is all heading in the same direction. It's collimated. It's all in phase, which means it's coherent. And it's all the same wavelength. And wavelength is the same as color. So we say it's one color. It's monochromatic. And that's a laser. Now, the power we measure, to measure the power of a laser, we do this. And I'm going to give you an example. Power density of a laser is also known as a radiance. And it's given by an E, or epsilon, excuse me, like that. And the radiance is just the power per area, right? Because I want to know the power coming out, but that's not all. I want to know how well it's focused. I want to know what area that power is hitting. Because uh, if it's hitting a much bigger area, it's going to be more diffuse and not as powerful. So the irradiance is the power per area. Here's an example. Let's see. Let's say I've got a, uh, let's see. Let's say I've got a laser coming out, and it's a, it's a three milliwatt laser. And it shoots on an area that's, oh, let's see. It's got a diameter of half a centimeter, which is about what that laser had at the beginning. And I want to know, what's the irradiance? Well, the irradiance is the power per area. Now, the area is pi times the diameter squared over 4, right? Because it's, it's, it's a circle here with a diameter, which is pi times uh, half a centimeter squared over 4, which is Zero point one nine six centimeters squared. So I've got five three milliwatts of power spread over an area of zero point one nine six centimeters squared. It's going to be about. It's 
It's going to be about 15 or 15 and a half or something. Let's see. 15.3 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So this is the power density, also known as the irradiance, and I guess you could also call it the flux of the laser. Well, that's how lasers work.